The following podcast is a next level production. My little soul. I haven't seen your face yet, but my love for you is already limitless. You aren't just my child. You're the future. What's happening to me? My baby. Sarah, you listen to me. As you grow up, you'll hear many stories about your mother. Push! How bored Big Alice, she assured her survival yet again. And of your father, changing what was left of the world. Welcome back to the show. I'm Steve. And I'm Daphne. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about Snowpiercer Season 3, Episode 5. Daphne, why don't you give us our title and synopsis? So the title for this episode is A New Life. And the synopsis goes like this. A series of terrorist attacks threatens to derail Leighton and Zara's big day. Short, sweet, to the point. Yes. Terrorist acts. Mm, okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> there is that there is that one line from LJ where she says it's a it's vandalism when we do it, it's a terrorist act when it's your baby's yes. tree, name tree or something <laughs> like that. So which I thought was pretty good. Uh, yeah. Can you believe that we we're halfway through the season? I know. I know. It's it's crazy. Laura and I have three episodes left of The Witcher, and now you and I have five episodes left of this. So yeah, it's it's coming up quick, but uh, it's exciting. This is a good. Ep- I know you kind of indicated that you felt this wasn't as, as strong of an episode, and I think I can totally agree with you. I think there's a lot of things in this episode that are setting up for the rest of the season. So it's 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 a kind of a typical episode five. It kind of ends on a cliffhanger, sort of. I think it. You're right. I think it's a setting the table episode, and while. In the first few episodes, we got a lot of excitement and craziness happening. This episode was a little more subdued in a lot of ways, but also there were some things that happened. I don't think it's my favorite episode of the season, but I do think that it does push things forward, like you said. Yeah, I rarely, I watched this one three times uh, this time before recording, so I kind of it, it holds a maybe a little bit of a better place in my heart. Till really shines in this one, and I've got some of that in my in my notes, in my opinion. Anyway, she uh, does. Got, I think so, you're right. So I think we'll you're see. definitely right. Yeah, I was. I wasn't super stoked after my first watch, but in my second watch, there were a few more things that I picked up that mm-hmm. made me feel a little bit better about it. I guess I just really love episodes that are more action-packed and we didn't get that in this episode like we got it was much more like i said subdued to me now our listeners may not agree with me and that's totally fine absolutely absolutely i would totally totally love to hear some feedback from our listeners Uh, (laughs) but with that let's go ahead and uh, get into our top five Perfect. Okay, last names. Up, up. Get them up on the tree. Okay, thank you. Oh, there we go. Uh, And Miss Gillies? Car, cargo. (laughs) That's a beautiful name, Chandra. You can put it on the tree. Okay, well, I will kick that off with something I'd like to call traditions. Mm, I have this in my notes. I have part of some of this in my notes. (laughs) So we'll see. Yeah. So we learned a little bit about the traditions with the Tailies and third class when we attend a tree ceremony where people take names that of people that were special to them and put them on the tree in hopes that Zara and Leighton will 
pick the name that they've put on the tree. And that we find out is a third class tradition, which was kind of cool. Um, and then we find out that the Tailies do something a little bit different where they just name a baby after the nearest city, which is how we find out Winnie was named Winnipeg. Okay, now that makes sense to me. I was so confused every time I watched this because I thought they said that the tree was a, a third class tradition and they said that the, the naming for the nearest city was a third class tradition. No, and it was a Taylor so tradition. Okay, now that makes a lot that conversation makes a lot more sense to me now than it did because that was my one big thing in the episode. I was going, wait a minute, how can you have two traditions for naming babies no. in this in this thing. <laughs> okay. Okay. That that makes a lot of sense. Well, and they didn't leave the kids out. Kids got to put names on the tree as well. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting because some of the names that they came up with were Cargill, Ogai, and I remember the teacher was sending one little boy up that had put Cargill on his little leaf, and I think his name was Chunder. And I'm thinking, wow, they really have lots of interesting <laughs> names on Snowpiercer. Suddenly, some of them don't seem so unique, I think, as some of the ones that we had. And even Till brings a leaf to the tree and asks them what they think of the name Alyssa, mm -hmm. which I thought was cute. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to showcase a little bit of, you know, those traditions that we haven't heard a lot about or seen. And I'm guessing that Winnipeg was the last Taylor baby to be born. I'm assuming that other kid, that there was, what happened to the little kid who went to be trained as an engineer? Miles, we Miles. haven't seen him, right. but I think he was older than her. Yes, I think, okay, you're right. I think he was a little bit older. But that's that's the other kid that I was trying to remember who and what happened to him. And the last time we saw him, they were he was in the school car or whatever. Yes, because so. he got handpicked to go to school to, because they wanted because he was so bright. They mm -hmm. wanted to train him to be an engineer. Right. Right. OK. OK. So we haven't seen him yet. So we don't. That's another. There's another character that we've been talking about that we don't know. I know what happened to the list uh, keeps growing. <laughs> So my my first one is uh, I, I'm calling it the hookups, but it's not just the hookups. It's the 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 bonding moments that we have. We have been definitely hooking up with with Josie, which I thought was kind of interesting. That they're bonding basically over both of them have apparently have lost their soulmate. She feels that she's lost Leighton because Zara's had this baby. He feels that he's lost Melanie because they are assuming that she's dead or they don't know. So I thought that their hookup was was really kind of cool. We see Pike kind of try to hook up with Ruth, but it it's kind of it's unsuccessful. She he basically says, you know, this is your last chance, and she's like, well, then I guess that's all there is. But there's still something going on there. I've got some more about Ruth later on, and then we see um, Javi and Sykes bonding over both having been attacked by Jupiter. By Jupiter. Yeah. I and didn't I realize that, was... that. I didn't realize that she had been attacked by Jupiter as well, because I was trying to think, why would Ben pick her? Mm -hmm. Because she knew Wilfred so well. And then it all came to, it just hit me that, oh my gosh, the scar on her face was caused by Jupiter. Maybe this is the way to break through to Javi. I'm hoping so. I think we're going to get it. We're going to get that chance now that, that he realizes he has someone, they have this shared kind of trauma together and, and she reaches out to him. I thought that was, it was a really, it was a really just a beautiful moment between the two characters. Uh, we have Miss Audrey unsuccessfully trying to get, not really hook up, but definitely get to see Mr. Wilford again. And she's, and Alex is not having it at all. No, you cannot go. No, see she put the foot down, both feet down on that one. <laughs> I thought that was great. Yeah. So that's, that's what I had for, for the hookups. Is there any, anything else that I'm missing? Let me see. Uh, I, I, you know, but part of me does still think that Ben is, is holding out a little bit of hope that Melanie might be alive. Well, I think Ben and Josie are in very similar positions 
they feel like they have lost. And this is also a very traumatic and tumultuous time. No day, no next day is a guarantee, especially because they are protected by steel that blocks out the cold that could kill them. And so you have to take every moment that you can to connect. And I think they needed to connect in some way. They were bonding over their mutual lack of their loved ones. And I think it's you know, it's bound to happen in situations like this because mm -hmm. they were, you know, they're kind of clinging to each other because they can't go to the people they want to be with and they need to feel some sort of comfort. For sure. So what's your next one? So my next one, my next one actually is Ben getting Sykes to help Javi. Because again, I didn't put the pieces together until they were actually talking about Jupiter attacking them. And you know that Javi doesn't like the idea of not being able to drive the train, doesn't like the idea of Ben not trusting him. Mm-hmm. And he kind of claps back at him about it, saying, well, you don't trust me to drive the train. And, you know, Ben really pushes the issue of moving forward outside of the train and that he really trusts Javi and Sykes to be able to check and troubleshoot and spec everything in mm -hmm. the AGSEC section because it's very important that it be operational. They need these tools to be able to do you know, to start their new life in New Eden, which, again, none of us really knows <laughs> what they're going to find when they get there. And, oh, I don't know. Uh, I yeah. guess we'll see. I really like this. This was a good this was a good way for him to basically get it. And I agree with you that, that definitely Ben doesn't trust Javi to drive the train. And, and that's obvious here. And, and but what he's saying is he, he's giving him this opening. He's saying, look, I'm going to trust you in this this little thing that I know you can do and I know she can do and help you with. And then also I'm sure in the back of his mind, he's like, she was attacked by Jupiter, even though that's something that's, that doesn't, hadn't happened on the show. Even she says she doesn't remember what she did to have Jupiter attack her. So it's that, it's that opportunity for Javi to show Ben that he can get past this or at least maybe not get past it, but at least be cope. able to deal with it. Yeah. To be able to cope. And she yeah. notices when he's they're doing the inventory and he kind of is, you know, shaking a little bit. And she is like, you know, we'll take a break. And then she talks to him about the dog attack. And she talks about when it was happening to her. She she doesn't even remember what she did to piss Wilfred off. Mm -hmm. All she remembers is that she could think at the time. It wasn't the dog's fault. I liked that. That it was I, happening. I, yeah, I liked that, that she's she's getting, telling Javi how she was able to cope with it. Is mm -hmm. I didn't blame the dog. I blamed the trainer. I blamed Wilford. Wilford. Yeah, so I, I like that for sure. I think it also gives us a little window into understanding why Sykes would flip to another side. Because she had six months with Leighton and Ben and everyone and learning, hey, Leighton's not everything that Wilfred said he was. Leighton and his group are actually trying to do things to better the lives of everyone, not, you know, being a tyrannical dictator, mm -hmm. which is what she was getting with Wilfred. And I think she bonded with them throughout that process and it made it easier. And now knowing this, mm -hmm. man, I think it makes perfect sense why she would yeah, yeah. flip to the other side. Let's see. So my next one is uh, Leighton and Till and or Leighton. I, I kind of found it interesting in the, the third time I watched it, Leighton kind of going back and forth or, or maybe not really. He didn't really go back and forth all that much because Zara basically kicks him out 
of, of the infirmary and tells him to go help Till, even though Till said she didn't need his help. But I really liked because I, I think I had forgotten that Till was a rookie comp when this all happened. So she had yes. been on the force for, I don't remember if she said how long, but definitely long enough to have picked up some skills. Have, you know, she graduated the academy, so she knows what she's doing as a policeman, but not only that, or a police officer, but not only that, she has these special experiences that she's now able to use in her role as trained detective. Even she's not being called trained detective anymore. And I just, I just right. love that we, we got the return of the Till and Layton kind of partnership that we yes. haven't seen. Cause you know, he mentor, he was really mentoring her in that first season to be the next trained detective and and then so I, I just I just absolutely loved it the whole thing the the interview style that she has and <laughs> the whole thing about when LJ flicks her on the chin and she almost like strikes out and then Layton pulls her back but then Layton's the one who's like you should have hit her you know yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so I, but yeah I just yeah. really liked go ahead no you go ahead <laughs> I just really liked the fact that we got that we haven't had that. In in a whole season, we haven't gotten to see the the Leighton Till partnership that we saw in that first season that I thought was so good and and, and really was a, a a cool relationship that we got to see. Yeah, it was interesting. She had that little altercation with LJ because remember in the first season, what Till and Leighton were investigating mm -hmm. was basically the death of Sean Wise. Mm -hmm. who we end up finding out was murdered by LJ and her little boyfriend, henchman, Eric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, the other thing I had about that before I forget, that I love the line from Till. I mean, it's it's a quote, but it, I just love that when she's, when they're kind of going back and forth about whether the fires were meant against Leighton or they were for something else. And she says, some people just like to watch things burn. Yep. And that's so true. If you've ever watched, I mean, from movies and television shows of firebugs, that's what it is, is they just like to watch things burn. And so, you know, but I definitely think it's definitely latent because now we know because the last attack aimed directly at him. So I think we have a good idea who did it too. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, it's disappointing. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm disappointed a little bit. <laughs> and I, I've got some more later on that we'll talk about when we get, get okay. to, to this. So. Okay, well, um, my next point, I wanted to talk a little bit about Zara, not necessarily the, the baby birth, but Zara as a whole, and it kind of ties into something that Leighton said a few episodes ago, where she would, she took situations and tried to protect herself first, and he accused her of this, that she's self-serving, meaning well, you're very self-serving, you know, you're, you want to save yourself. So you agreed to let Dr. Hedwood play around with our baby. And so he was very angry when that happened. However, Zara has, she kind of has a history of that now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think back to, she actually left the tail. I mean, she left the tail. She left Leighton behind and went up to work in the rest of the train. Right. She went to work in the night car for Miss Audrey. Yeah. And left Leighton. And so Leighton and Josie became a couple during this time after Zara had, had left. So, I mean, she, she does look out for herself first. I mean, mm -hmm. she, she really does. And, you know, she went on to have a relationship with the guy that was actually murdered by LJ and Eric, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about this, like this episode made me really go back to reading some of my notes from earlier episodes and just looking at it and saying, well, hmm, you know, Zara does have a history of doing stuff like this, although she did kind of change her tune at one point and yell out to Leighton while she was delivering the baby she said i made a terrible mistake mm -hmm. and then leighton responded with no you didn't you made a choice you made a tough call in a world that wants to kill your daughter 
And I, it must feel often like life and death there because you just really don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you're, as I mentioned earlier, you're close to death at any minute. All it will take is one tiny hole. Mm -hmm. And then life will be, you know, be over. And so I just, I want to like Zara. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like her, sometime I don't. I did think it was comical when she was, when, <laughs> when Winnie was running through the baby, the baby, <laughs> baby time. Okay, so she's running through and they get there just before they get there, you know, Leighton is just being overbearing and protective. And Zara says, I'm having a baby, not a heart attack. <laughs> and Leighton says, yeah, I got the heart attack part covered. <laughs> I like that line. <laughs> you know, and I love seeing Winnie so excited. You can tell she's just like, oh, my God, there's going to be another baby here. Someone younger than me on this train. Isn't that going to be amazing? And yeah. Yeah, but and this yeah. this was actually this, this Winnie and I'll 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 jump to it now just because we're talking about it because it's it's short because that was my number one was just her excitement is just so infectious and every it time is. she like you said she's running through baby time baby time you know and, and she's <laughs> she, her cute little voice and she's so excited about it and you know everybody's like getting out of her way and it just was it was just so good it was it was one of those. Refreshing is, yes. is what what I'm thinking that, that it, it gave me. It refreshed joyous. me. Joyous. It yeah. was joyous. For and all we don't joy. get a lot. Of, we do not get a lot of that on Snowpiercer. We just don't. So it's it's always great to see that. Very, very cool. Um, let's see. I had another one that we can talk about. We've already, we kind of started talking about the doctors and what's going on with the different patients. But so we have, you know, Zara asked for Dr. Headwood to stay when Dr. Pelton shows up and she tells Leighton, FYI, we'll, we'll first starting to wake up. Um, but I loved, and I've got the line in my quotes when we get to it that Dr. Pelton says about what Dr. Hedwood was doing to this baby. <laughs> Cause I love how she's seeing all the things and she's recognizing all the things that pelts it, that Hedwood has done to this baby. And she's just like, this is crazy. And like when they, when Zara starts to lose the uh, temperature starts to go down, she starts to uh, be cold. Both Hedwood and Pelton are like, well, this is, or Dr. Hedwood says, this is what the other Dr. Hedwood said we should expect. And Pelton's mm -hmm. like, we should expect this, you know? <laughs> And, yeah, and that the baby's going to be cold, but it was great that at least there at the end we got that little bit where the baby warmed up. Apparently, when it came out, Zara warmed up, and I just was really, it was just really cool to see that baby and mother were okay. And it's one of the rare deliveries that we see in movies and TV where we see all the muck on the baby there when they get that quick shot of of her uh, being delivered and clipping the uh, what do they call that thing? The umbilical, umbilical cord. cord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was really, really cool to see that. Um, I love to see Wilford, Alex kind of taking care of, of Wilford. And then there at the end, and I didn't get, did, did you reckon, it looked like he was being brought back to that car where the cell was. Yes, he was, she put him in front of cartoons. Yes. Okay. So she did put him in in front of the cartoons. I didn't couldn't see if she put him in the cell or not. But she no. But it's definitely put, that same. Definitely that same car. It's kind of like the library car. Yeah. And her doing that while she's wheeling him, I don't know why, but it gave me these vibes from this movie called The Clockwork Orange. Mm -hmm. And the character Alex, played by Malcolm McDowell, is wheeled into a room. And he, they hold his eyes open and make him watch all these things to cure him of his violent tendencies. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was really strange that she wheeled him in to look at cartoons. Yeah, yeah. Like so I it's... don't know what the symbol, you know, what that represents, but and it could be nothing. Could be. We'll find out. Yeah. Uh, so I think I, I might have skipped over one of yours. It's. Uh... Because I kind of merged my Winnie point into my doctor's point. So uh, go ahead to your next one. One thing I wanted to mention about Doc Pelton before we move on to my next point is I loved her line when she gets there 
And Dr. Headwood is alluding to some of the things that she had done. And she actually says, oh, don't worry. I've got a pretty good inkling already. Meaning, mm -hmm. yeah, I, you know, I've read the file. I, I know what you've been up to here in your crazy medical mm -hmm. factory that you've created. So, yeah. So my next one is um, I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk a little bit about Ruth. Okay. And about the fact, one, she looks incredible. She's mm -hmm. all clean and she just looks like the old Ruth, but something a little like brighter and even better, like a two, version 2.0. Like she has even more confidence. And I loved that she, you know, they're getting ready to ring bells every hour until the baby's born. And she just tells Tristan, hospitality is not going to tie itself in knots going by the book anymore let's use what we've learned these past six months and i loved that because it shows that she's not all caught up in protocols and procedures now mm -hmm. she's looking at things in it with a different lens and i appreciated that and she had that interaction with pike and i wondered if it was necessarily about their relationship or maybe it appeared like he gave her an ultimatum like i want you to take over the train or we can't be together but i didn't really get that vibe it was just there were things that were not said but maybe implied there and as i said i think last week i really think ruth sees all the good in him but we forget you know, the old Pike, because we've seen all of these great things that he's been doing. Mm -hmm. We forget some of the things. I mean, Pike, Pike was in, I believe he was involved with the cannibalism in the, yes. in the tailies with the tailies and Leighton knows all of these things. And I think that's one, that might be one reason why he just can't fully embrace Leighton as a leader, even though Leighton has made it very clear that he wants Pike to be a part of things going mm -hmm. forward. Leighton is very open to things. Like he seems very open to, well, you know, even though he said, you know, people, people don't necessarily change. Mm -hmm. Because I know when he was talking to Oz about the ethanol, he talks about, Oz talks about changing and Leighton doesn't seem really big on thinking people can change. So that does make me wonder, is Pike right? That Leighton may on, at face value, want him to be a part of things, but he'll never forget the things that he had done as part of the tale. So I'm not really sure. So Ruth, Ruth was my next one as well. And, hosp and just hospitality in general, because it was a little, a who's the guy? Who's the other guy? That's Tristan. Okay, Tristan. Okay, so Tris, she, she does say that thing about we're not we're not going to tie ourselves up in knots. We're going to be loose. But then they do the bells, you know, mm -hmm. on the hour, and it seemed like it was five or six hours. It seemed like a long time passed. Yeah, it did. It seemed like every other like every five minutes we're getting bells ringing, <laughs> you know. And I don't know if it's supposed to be the same bell or a new bell or what, but I, I absolutely was just tickled when Wilford goes ding ding, ding. in his hospital bed. <laughs> um, but uh, Sean Bean is great, even when he's just laying in a hospital bed in a partial coma, yeah. like you know, incoherent and kind of oblivious. He's still wonderful. And you said there was a there was a couple things about Ruth that seemed a little off, and you're right. For one thing, which I didn't notice until the third the third watch, her shirt is not buttoned to the throat, like every other time we've seen her in her hospitality uniform. It's always buttoned all the way up. And this one, it was like, yep. I mean, you couldn't really see cleavage, but it was open, like it was pretty. <laughs> so, so she's definitely loosening up her. That there was kind of protocols and stuff. Yeah. But I'm a little unsure about, and I think this is where the show is kind of mis maybe misdirecting us or something because, I mean, we're fairly sure that Pike is the one who who detonated the explosion that almost killed Layton because we see him with what looks like a detonator. He smashes it. He goes to the night car 
or to the, I'm sorry, to the uh, third class section where Miss Audrey is singing and he's kind of watching her. And I couldn't tell if maybe he was coming to report to Miss Audrey, like Audrey is the, this, the one he's getting orders from for these attacks on Leighton, which would make sense. Yeah. But not for Pike to be doing it. But, Mm -mm. but the other thing is there's an interaction that I caught it. I was suspicious of it in the second episode. In the third episode, I definitely was even more suspicious of it. So Ruth comes in to where Leighton and Till are. And she says, Ben reports smoke in the ag section. Someone should go check it out. And so Leighton goes to check it out. On his way there, he meets with a guy who says, I saw the smoke and I pulled the alarm. Right? And then immediately after that, it cuts to Ben and Josie in the engine reacting to the second fire. Mm -hmm. The fire that Leighton, like Leighton puts out the, the one fire and they're reacting to the second fire. And there's no mention of that smoke thing. And again, it's another one of those things that the show is doing things off screen that we don't, so we don't actually know if Ben contacted Ruth about this smoke or if Ruth was setting up Leighton to go down there. I don't think Ruth would be setting up Leighton. I don't. Okay. I think that the smoke was from this fire, the what I call the wastebasket fire, because mm-hmm. we have the tree fire. Right. And then we had the wastebasket fire, which the guy said, I, you know, I alerted to the, I alerted folks about this. And we see Pike there, clearly, mm-hmm. like just outside the room. Oh, yeah. But when Pike goes and is just staring at Miss Audrey and he's got that detonator, he looks so uneasy. And so what have I done? Why did I do this? And I'm just not sure if he is taking orders from anyone or if he is trying to impress Ruth by, I don't know about impressing her, but I feel like he might be trying. Trying to assassinate Leighton just to put Ruth in to take the position of power. Yeah, but I don't know that he wants to kill Leighton. I think he wants to sideline him again. I'm not sure what he really wants, and I'm hoping that in the next episode, we're going to find out what the heck is going on. Yeah, I I hope so, because we really haven't seen, at least in this season, we haven't seen that kind of agency out of Pike. No. We've seen more of him taking the orders from somebody and and like the thing with the fireworks and and the, the other stuff, like... We've seen him being the the right hand man, the second in command kind of thing. Not like I said, not taking agency for for himself. So um, I just it just was a weird, just a weird interaction that we didn't hear Ben report to Ruth about the smoke. But I, I guess we can take it at face value that she did get a report from Ben that hey, there's smoke in AgSec. Somebody should check it out. And that was the waste, like you said, the waste basket fire. So that's a scary place to be setting a fire to. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I was I was it was a little. Almost, again, there's so many convenient things that happen in this story that they're able to get all of it under control and they didn't lose any of the seed bank. Everything is fine. Like Ben says to Javi, all systems are online. Everything's good to go. And I'm like, that's really quick. That's (laughs) convenient. It is convenient because, again, though, it's a really stupid thing to set fire in the ag sec. It doesn't. It's just not smart. I it's mean, such an and Pike car. is, yeah, and Pike is smarter than that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand that. And maybe someone listening can point something out that we may have missed because I'm just not sure. Again, it may just be the showrunners reminding us that Pike is not an angel, even though we may be looking at him in a different way. It's just reminding us how human he is, how human okay. they all are. It's very different. I mean, yeah. they're in extreme, they're in an extreme situation and okay. you just yeah. never that, know. That makes sense. Um, so are we at your number one or do you have one more? Um, I do. Okay. Cause I am all out. Okay. So let's, let's talk about. Alex and Wilford. Okay. 
Remember Melanie said to her two episodes ago, you need to face, face your fears. Well, this episode ended with a song called Love and Hate. And I felt after listening to it, I went on Spotify and listened to it again. It really represents Alex and her relationship with Wilford, because it is about there being a very thin line between love and hate. And she loves him and she hates him. Like she does not like the things he has done. She hates everything that he has done, but she loves him because he raised her and took care of her. And I think it's very difficult for her to be in this situation because at the one point, she's keeping Audrey from getting into the room, but she's also kind of grumpy when Leighton shows up. It's like, aren't you having a baby? Like, it's the way mm-hmm. she said it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have that quote, actually, when we get to quotes. But um, yeah. I, and there's a there was that beginning with Wilford, his kind of his dream state that he was in. And it reminded me of a few things that have happened that, um, did we, were we aware that there was actual physical abuse to Alex from Wilford? Cause it appeared. No, in that, in but that it flash- appeared like it. Mm-hmm. In that flashback, it definitely appeared like there was some form of physical abuse that went on, not just the mental and, uh, and other stuff that we saw. So I thought that was interesting that, that that's their relationship is, is out of that. But yeah, it's, it's for sure complicated between it Alex is. and Wilford. And Doc Pelton, you know, recommended that she read to him that mental stimulation would be good. And she knows that him being a vegetable is not in the best interest of the train because he does still have knowledge that would be useful in pushing the train forward. So she's trying to balance the fact that she hates him and she loves him at the same time. So instead, she reads Don Quixote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't catch, what did she say at the beginning that he didn't like that story or that it was, it seemed like it was something like that she's reading that book because he didn't like it or something to that effect was what I it sounded like to me. Well, maybe that would then stimulate the, you know, mental stimulation yeah. of, oh, would you please stop with that book? Instead, <laughs> yeah. he's hearing bells instead. Yeah, yeah. And I love when, when Leighton does come into the room, though, and, and and he says something like, I never wished the suspension on my, my worst enemy, but now I've, I've kind of changed be- my mind on that. Yeah. Enjoy your death nap or something like that yeah. you know, as he leaves. But uh, yeah, it's definitely, a, it's going to be interesting to see now that he's out of the hospital bed, how much interaction he has with Alice. Because uh, it was one of those things that didn't occur to me until this third watch that that's why Ben is is so um, frantic is because he's not down just one engineer. He's basically down two engineers. It's him. Uh, it's, he's it's all him. by himself. Yeah. So yeah, needs- I mean, yeah, it's a situation that nobody wants to be in. You know, if anything happens to him, you know, they've got Alex and that's it. I mean, it's him yeah. and Alex. Javi, you can't completely count on right now. So he has to be very careful, but he's also been giving he's also been giving Josie some lessons in how to drive the train. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see going forward how that how that affects the dynamic of the group. And that was another thing that was that was curious to me is he finds her in his in Javi's bunk, and she mm-hmm. says that she she got used to sleeping close Near to the, the engine. engine. Yeah, yep, because of the whirring. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I couldn't. Yeah, and I couldn't remember when that was that she slept so close to the engine because she that was with the. He- she was she slept close to the engine because she was part of the group that was separated from everyone else okay. and was on the on Snowpiercer when they were out trying to um figure out how to take the train back and verify data that Melanie You're right. had sent. Okay, okay, yeah. So that on that bullet train or the what did what did Sice call it? The 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 the, the 
the fast the bullet train sweatshop or something like that yeah. because it was so okay yeah you're right so so that would make sense that she she got used to that noisy train because it was only nine cars or whatever it was but yeah. we did get another confirmation they do this is the second time they've said 1029 cars yep. long for so we're for sure that's where we're at right now so yes for now yeah for now <laughs> <laughs> for now um, so is that all do you have any other notes I do, because there's okay. a few things we didn't talk about. One, we have to talk about Josie and her visit by doc- to Dr. Headwood and yes. learning that her right leg is numb. And so she seems to be having some issues with feeling things and stuff spreading. And so Dr. Headwood says that thermoreception is very complex. Her TRP channels are restricting cold stimulus Editing how she processes injurious stimuli, and it's possibly affecting other sensations. And she actually likens it to living on a street, and your light goes out, and the neighbor's light goes out as well, because it's close by. Like, right. just like a, a connection that's not completely there, but still effective. Yeah, I had this in my notes in my in one of my points that I didn't bring up. I skipped I skipped over is the the changing her kind of changing biochemistry and mm-hmm. whether whether this is going to be something because I think what Hedwood says is because I think Josie says is it spreading and then as in is it getting more and then Hedwood says well it could be just different could be just yeah. changing spots Connected. kind of yeah. thing. So, uh, so it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see going forward. And then of course, when she, when she stabs her leg with, in oh front of my Ben, goodness. I know it was tough to watch, but on the third watch, I noticed it looked like there might've been another scar where she's done that before. before. So she's been practicing this to see if she, yeah. She's probably just trying to check to make sure that she can still feel something. And I can tell you, this is, this is, this is hard to live with. I had, I had knee surgery. Uh, I had ACL reconstruction in 1993 and I have, there's a patch, a small patch right next to my knee where it's basically dull. There's basically, it's basically numb. Like it's asleep. And I remember asking the doctor, is that something that's ever going to come back? And he says, probably not. He says, probably nerve. There were nerve endings that were clipped during one of those surgeries that I had, and mm-hmm. they're just never going to be repaired. So I have to, I just live with this numbness and it, it, it's not my whole leg like Josie's because I, I don't know how you would yeah. live that way. It's just this small patch right next to my knee, but it's definitely a constant thing and it's, it's going to be there forever. So it's, it's tough to live with that. Yeah. And after that, She's talking to Ben and he calls her a miracle. She's like, you're a miracle. And then he talks about his relationship where he was with someone for 15 years and he stayed on the island even after she had gone. It was, you know, a metaphor. And Josie kind of understands that. And that's when I realized, you know, they're really starting to connect and cling to each other because there's no one that else that's there. Yeah. We did get a little bit, we get, learned about Z and his speakeasy that goes on and his little alcohol process, um, mm-hmm. not realizing that some of it had been replaced with water. We talked about the fire in the ag sec, but what we didn't talk about is it was actually, there was a bomb there as well. Mm-hmm. For the You know, we talked about the detonator, but it was actually, you know, not just, it was a fire and then... An explosion, which makes it even worse because they could have lost a lot there. Yeah. And that's another thing that I'm curious to see because Javi says there's a lot of that amyl nitrate missing. Mm -hmm. And that's like fertilizer bomb stuff is what that's that's. And so maybe it was all used up in this bomb. I don't know. And remember what Till Till said. One fire, it's a statement. We get another, it's a campaign. Then it's about shaking people's faith. And so I'm I'm concerned also whether all of the alcohol, ethanol, is gone as well. Because that was a lot of she says it wasn't there was there was not enough on those those leaves 
to equal what was in those bottles that the guy showed him. I wonder if this bomb, you know, it's just more of it. Yeah. I'm concerned there's more out there somewhere. And, you know, we don't know. Is something beyond Pike involved? Like, I, I don't know. And hopefully we'll find out soon. But one other thing that Till did, she had that great conversation with Audrey where she talked to her about all the help that she gave to people, that she mm-hmm. was really a healer. And she helped a lot of people and they're going to need that when they get off the train. And that, a little bit later, we get Audrey singing and I'm thinking, okay, maybe that will bring her back. I miss the Audrey that we used to have because she was my favorite character. Yeah, she was a, a lot lighter and she was... Um... Yeah, not as not as heavy and not as dark. And so hopefully this might be her trying to claw her way out of Wilford's control. Maybe maybe having this separation, this time of separation from Wilford is gonna help her to get back to being that that better Audrey that we Well, I feel like she and Sykes and Javi can start a support group for each other for all the trauma that they've Wilford's gone anonymous. through with Wilford. Wilford's anonymous, because I feel like They've been through a lot, and I think there are probably more people. Maybe Alex needs to be part of this as well. Um, because, yeah, it was, it's, it's just really sad. It's really sad. I did think it was funny that Oz and Lila were having a baby pool. People were betting on what name that Zara was going to pick. And, of course, she went with the name Liana. She would not let go of that leaf. She found that yeah. leaf. <laughs> And Leighton asks her, well, what does it mean? And she says it doesn't, she can put the meaning into it with her life. And I liked that as well. And I think, yes, I think that's all of my notes. That's, that's a good poll there about the, uh, about that conversation. And then about the, the, the leaves, because I wonder if we're going to find out who put that leaf on there. Yeah. I want to know now who did it. And I was reminded again, I started thinking back on it again of LJ, whose last name is Folger. And I think we talked about this in the first season that they are, they must be some sort of kin to the Folger's coffee ground. Well, that's what I thought. That's what I was always thinking. I think we talked about that in the first season, but for some reason it came back to me today as I was watching it again going, oh yeah, the Folger's coffee thing, because they were always drinking coffee in that first mm-hmm. season. So and that was one yeah. of the, their, what was one of their special requests or something. So makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to uh, go into some quotes. Yeah. I've used all of mine in our discussion of okay. the episode, I think. I'll double check, but I think I have used everything that I uh, had. While you're, while you're looking at, I will I will say a couple of mine. They, I alluded to it earlier. You talked about Dr. Pilton's quote when she comes in, but uh, when we come back from commercial, she's saying unethical, unprofessional, dangerous, and downright screwy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love about, her. I don't great. feel like we've gotten her last name until this episode. I'm not sure. I think you're right. I think she was just called the doctor. I think Dr. Yeah. Pelton, I, it didn't, it didn't seem to me. Uh, and the only other one I've got is again, you alluded to it when, uh, when um, Leighton comes into the room, Alex says, aren't you supposed to be panicking and making Zara's life worse? <laughs> He's like, I, I, I will. And I, or I, I have been, and I will again, or something like that is what he said. I didn't get, I didn't copy his response down, but <sighs> Yeah. That's it for quotes. Yeah, I have no quotes. We have already used all of mine in this conversation. So Daphne, do you have any podcast recommendations for this week? Um, I can only recommend that I've been listening to nothing because I have no time. <laughs> no. Um I can recommend the Walking Dead cast because that's one podcast that I've been able to keep up with throughout everything. Um, I know that Ben is doing a great job over at Wilhelm. And of course, my podcast co-host, Paik, and his co-host, Rima, covering you on Strange Indeed. It's a show I've not watched, so I'm not caught up. But I'm sure, like any other episode that they do on any of the series I've listened to, they're killing it over there. So those are the only ones that I can recommend. And for me, it's been so busy uh, for me doing two podcasts and, and everything else. But uh, I, I have gone back to listening to the Welcome to Our Show, which is the New Girl 
rewatch show with Hannah Simone, Zoe Deschanel, and Lamorne Morris. So I, I highly recommend that they're fun to listen to. And I hope they get Jack, uh, Jake Johnson and Max Greenfield on there sometime. But who knows? They haven't they haven't teased having those guys on there. So. <laughs> So we have come to the end or towards the end of our our time together tonight. So while we don't have any feedback this week, you can submit feedback to us at any time. We can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that you use. If ratings are available, give us a rating or review on one or all of those platforms. You can check out our website, which is panels to pixelspodcast.com. As I mentioned, you can submit your feedback by going to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We are on Twitter at panels to pixels. That's the word panels with the number two and then pixels at panels to pixels on Twitter. You can email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels, the number one at gmail.com. You can also find us on YouTube. If you search Panels to Pixels podcast, go on there, subscribe, and give us a thumbs up. We are on Instagram as well, at Panels to Pixels podcast, all spelled out. Check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend them from Wilhelm, the Wil Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. You can go to nextlevelradioonline.com and you'll find all of them right there. Coming up next week, we have episode six of season three called Born to Bleed. It makes me really nervous whenever I see a title for the show that says bleed in it because I think of what Wilford has done to people in the past like Kevin and Audrey and it just scares me. So what have you got coming up on Run for Your Lives? Well, on Run for Your Lives, we are covering Tremors 4 this week, which means we're getting very close, or actually we are at the end of season three. Our next episode after this one will be our look back special, which is one of my favorite episodes to record because we really get to discuss our favorites from the last 24 episodes. Very nice, very nice. And Laura and I are cover, are continuing to cover The Witcher Season 2 right here on Panels to Pixels. We'll have episode 182 for you later this week. Oh my goodness. So you're doing double, you're doing double duty this week. Yeah, and we're getting close to 200. Like, I, I know Mark's got something planned, something big planned for 200 <laughs> that uh, I'm excited for. I hope it, it happens. He's, he's got, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it. So I'm not going to put it out there yet, but it's, uh, he's got some, uh, some, some good ideas for our, our 200th episode. That is awesome. I'm actually doing triple duty this week because I'm recording an episode with Wendy and Jason. We're actually going back on House Podcastica to talk about Yellow Jackets episodes one through five individually because we did like a catch-up episodes one through five in one episode but we've mm -hmm. decided to take everything into we're taking everything that we learned from everything that's happened this season and applying it to these first five episodes so it's going to be full of spoilers but i think it's going to be a lot of fun to go back and actually think about okay yeah that happens so how does that affect how do all these things fit together so i'm really excited i'm excited to hear it so i, I may have to send some feedback next week i don't think i can get getting in this this week uh, with what i've got going on but uh, yeah i'm excited <laughs> as well thank you all for listening i'm steve and i'm daphne and this was panels to pixels and we will see you on the next panel good night good night <laughs>